Steve Kerr has us fired up because the countdown is on for our first look at Team USA's World Cup team action. Tonight, the Americans take on Puerto Rico in Las Vegas. The squad's sole tune-up game stateside before heading to Spain and Abu Dhabi for four more warm-up games before the tournament officially kicks off on August 26. Now, Team USA is looking to bounce back from a seventh-place finish in the 2019 FIBA World Cup, although no players from that tournament's roster are on the one for 2023. In fact, nobody on USA's 12-man roster has any Olympic or World Cup experience as we say hello to Tim Bontemps, who is live from Las Vegas, where you've been covering Team USA all week. And you were able to actually watch the first few days of training camp here. After watching, what were your biggest takeaways from the team practice here? Well, Malika, you just talked about the lack of experience and the youth that's on this team. And it was really, I think, interesting to hear Steve Kerr talk a lot over the past several days about how much he's going to lean on Knicks point guard Jalen Brunson to be the leader of this group. You mentioned this as this team has no senior international experience. Yep. There's nobody that's made it all in the 18. There's a bunch of guys that are on the rookie deals. This is a young team that's going into FIBA competition where games are really physical. The refs are certainly not up to the same standard typically as the NBA. And there's going to be adversity at times during this tournament. And Steve Kerr has made it clear that Jalen Brunson is the guy that's going to lead this team through this tournament. It's very clear he's going to be his starting point guard, and he's going to be the guy that he counts on to guide this group through what's going to be a very challenging several weeks. Team USA has only won the gold medal twice in this tournament in the last 30 years. It is not like the Olympic Games. We've struggled a lot, finished seventh in 2019, obviously lost to France in the quarterfinals. Certainly this group would love to win the gold medal. Steve Kurt is counting on Jalen Brunson to be a big part of getting this team over the finish line. There's some tough competition out there too, right? When you look at France, when you look at Canada, especially the teams that they're putting together. But Tim, you wrote that there were rave reviews, right, coming out of camp. And not just for the guys that are on Team USA, but for one in particular who's on the select team. What more can you tell us about Cade Cunningham's weekend? Well, as you said, Malika, Cade Cunningham was dominant for the select team in scrimmages on Friday and Saturday. Now, it's a very time-honored tradition at Team USA camps for the select team to win the first day of scrimmages and then get beat down by the senior national team on the second day. That did play out over Friday and Saturday scrimmages, but the guy who was great both days was Cade Cunningham, the number one pick in the 2021 draft, who only played 12 games last year, of a stress fracture in his left leg. He had to have surgery on that injury. He missed the last nine months. But seeing him back out there in a competitive setting, he looked like he didn't miss any time at all. Mm. Steve Kerr had him playing in a Luka Doncic-type role that he'll play for Slovenia in the tournament. The select team usually runs a bunch of stuff that they're going to see in the World Cup from other countries. And Cade was getting wherever he wanted on the court. He was bossing guys like Jalen Brunson and Tyrese Halliburton inside. He was getting into the lane and hitting his teammate Jalen Duran from the Pistons with passes for buckets. He was really, really impressive. And obviously, if he hadn't had it in that injury, perhaps he'd have been part of the senior national team. Certainly right. could have helped. But if you're a Pistons fan, very encouraging signs from a guy who missed all of last, just about all last season with the way Cade Cunningham played here over the past few days. So, Tim, you've had a peek behind the curtain for the last couple of days getting to watch these practices. I want to bring Chene, Ramona, and Perk back into the discussion here because we're going to get our first chance to take a look at this tonight in the game versus Puerto Rico. So, Perk, what are you going to be watching most closely in this scrimmage? You know what? <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I know my, I'm tripping right now, but I, I coached my last AAU basketball tournament this past <laughs> weekend, and I was doing a lot of yelling. But I'm looking at Mikael Bridges. I'm looking at Mikael Bridges, and no, I didn't get ejected. But think about when Mikael Bridges got to Brooklyn. <laughs> he, I mean, in my opinion, he looks like the franchise player. And he's the best two-way player on this team USA right now. I'm looking to see what he's going to do, his growth, how he's going to continue to grow, because I want to see if he's able to continue to keep this energy when he has other franchise guys on the roster with him. Like, can he take over a game where the, the social media is going viral because he's lighting it up or he's having a 30-piece? So I got my eye on Mikael Bridges, uh, especially tonight. I'm going to be watching. Yeah, what to watch for in this matchup is who will emerge as the leader. And me making a guess, I went similar to Steve Kerr and Jalen Brunson, just because he seems like he has that tenacity offensively to keep them 
in formation. I mean, what did he do last season with the Knicks? Career highs in points per game, assists per game, field goal percentage, and also elevated those around him. Julius Randle, an all-star playing with him. R.J. Barrett, a better season. And you think about it, the Knicks overall, I mean, they had the most wins, 47 wins since the 2013 season. He is a leader, and I'm glad that, like, I was thinking the yeah. same way as Steve Kerr. Like, the point guard will dictate, but it might be a surprise to see who else is really, like, that vocal leader, too. Someone maybe particularly in the paint. So I'm going to see, like, who's pointing, who's getting everyone information. My idea is Jalen, but I'd love to be pleasantly surprised by someone else as well. I want to watch the style that they play with. This is Steve Kerr's first time coaching the national team. We saw Greg Popovich play in this, in this role, but I've seen Steve Kerr as a head coach for the Golden State Warriors. And we know how the Warriors play, right? Steph Curry running around, Clay Thompson, no dribble, just shoot it. With the balls moving and it's flowing, and it looks so effortless, it's controlled chaos. But you, they have plays, like you have to learn how to play that style. And this national team has had a couple of days to learn the way that Steve Kerr wants them to play. It's also different on the international stage and with the international rules. So I think it's gonna be an interesting stylistic watch tonight. It's Mikhail Bridges, Brandon Ingram, Jaron Jackson Jr. and Brunson have started in every single game. So what more can you tell us about how Steve Kerr is thinking about that? Yeah, Malika, I think we can expect to see those four guys out there in the starting lineup tonight against Puerto Rico. I think, as you mentioned, with Anthony Edwards starting in that scrimmage on Saturday with the way that five-man unit played dominating the select team, I think it's likely he will play. And like you, I'm curious to see what the rotation looks like after that. Another guy Steve Kerr has talked about a ton is Lakers forward Austin Reeves. Mm. Really likes his passing ability, his, his ability to handle the ball. I think he's going to play a lot. I think we're going to see some of Tyrese Halliburton and Jalen Brunson playing together in a two-point guard lineup. Steve Kerr has talked a lot about that. Yep. I'm also curious to see whether Walker Kessler or Bobby Portis emerges as the backup center behind Jaron Jackson Jr. He, Mikael Bridges, and Jalen Brunson clearly are the cornerstones of this team. And then I think in general, as Rona pointed out, Steve Kerr has raved about this group's passing. And we know from the moment he got to the Warriors, he has emphasized ball movement and flow around the court. He's been very, very happy with how much they've been passing the ball, how willing guys have been to move the ball and get open shots. And I think we're going to see a lot of, the, of Team USA trying to emulate that Warriors free-flowing yeah. style tonight against Puerto Rico and as they get ready for this tournament. Well, you know what else they're going to emulate? The Warriors going small because <laughs> you, you, you reported that you haven't seen yes. Jaron Jackson Jr., Walker Kessler, or Bobby Portis, any of the two of the three of them on the floor at the same time. So it's going to be very interesting to see how that sticks out. The West is loaded heading into next season. The reigning champs favored to win the conference. That surprises no one. They're followed by the teams who retooled in the Suns, the Warriors, the Clippers, the Lakers. One team, though, that's not in the top five here, the Memphis Grizzlies. They are coming in six as we say hello once again to Tim Bontemps, who is still in Las Vegas. And you've been watching Jaron Jackson Jr. up close this past weekend. These last couple of days, he's been practicing with Team USA. You were able to, ca you were able to catch up with him. And not only did he talk about the World Cup, but he also talked about the Grizzlies. Can you tell us a little bit more about that conversation about what stood out to you, Tim? Yeah, Malika, well, it's obviously been a very eventful summer on a lot of fronts for the Memphis Grizzlies. There's obviously the John Morant suspension. He's going to miss the first 25 games of the season. They also gave Desmond Bain, the other star player with the Grizzlies, a $200 million max extension. They let Dylan Brooks leave in free agency. He went to the Houston Rockets, and then they replaced him with Marcus Smart. So they now have the two back-to-back -back Defensive Player of the Year uh, winners on the Grizzlies roster. And Jared talked about all those things with me. As for John Morant, missing him for the first 25 games, he, he said that would be a blow to their roster, but also said that the Grizzlies have missed a bunch of key guys over the past couple of years have been able to win a lot of games anyway. Jared has missed significant time. Desmond Bain missed a bunch of time this year. And John Moran has also missed significant time. And the Grizzlies have still managed to be near the top of the conference, giving right. him confidence the Grizzlies could do that again. He was thrilled about the addition of Marcus Smart, said he thinks he can help them both on the court and in the locker room as a vocal presence in both places. Certainly gives them that perimeter defender to replace uh, Dylan Brooks on the court. And as for Desmond Bain, I asked if he was excited about that extension. He started laughing and said he got a boatload of money. So, of course, he was thrilled <laughs> for him. But typically, 
the Grizzlies are still a confident bunch, as yeah. Jaron Jackson showed this weekend, and they feel good about their chances of being right in the mix at the top of the West next year, despite yeah. not having their star point guard for the first third of the year. Well, and I get that, because when you look at history, right, they were second in the West last year, even when John Morant missed a ton of games, when you look at his injury history and all that stuff, but it was Tyus Jones, right, who stepped up in his absence, and they don't have him this year, Perk. So if they are going to do what they did again, if they are going to defy the odds, if they are going to do the improbable, what is the key to you see here, Kendrick? <clears throat> well, I have two keys. The first one is Jared Jackson Jr., right? Now Now he has to climb into that 22 to 26 points per game, especially while Ja Moran is out. First time All-Star last year, Defensive Player of the Year. We know what he brings on the defensive side of things. Now offensively, getting into his bag, holding it down. The offense is going to be ran through him. We know he's versatile when it comes to picking and popping. Also, the addition of Marcus Smart. What have we been talking about for so long with the Memphis Grizzlies? Getting some leadership in that locker room. So not only the addition of Marcus Smart, but Derrick Rose. Now the Memphis Grizzlies have everything and more, especially when John Morant returns to actually make a, a legitimate push in the Western Conference. And nobody could say, frown upon it. That's true. I think the key also is just finding an identity that's more closely tied to, like, the basketball because they do a lot of great things on the court because, mm -hmm. you know, they embrace this idea of being, you know, villains in yeah. the world of heroes and villains, but they flew a little bit too close to the sun when it came to villains. And so now it's like, what do we do well that we can apply every time we touch the floor? They led the NBA in paints points per game under uh, Coach Taylor Jenkins, which, by the way, they've done that four years straight, which is impressive. They have a great home standability, 35 and 6 at home. So once you find that identity that keeps them together every night, I think they'll feel better about themselves because it's, a, it's just plug and play uh, after that. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's all about maturity for them. They, mm -hmm. they have the talent and they've had the talent for a couple of years here. And the question is, when do they grow up? When do they take that step forward? I'm, I'm very high on the Memphis Grizzlies this year. I love the addition of Marcus Smart and, and Derrick Rose. John Morant's only going to miss a quarter of the season here. And, and if anything, I think the biggest addition will be Steven Adams, getting right. him back into that lineup after that knee injury that he had last year. But I think they have the talent. They just needed the maturity to go with it, and they have that now. In That's the, the perfect word, maturity and health. If they can get Steven Adams, if Desmond Bain, who our Tim McMahon has reported, is on track to return uh, at the start of the season, if all of that goes their way, there is every reason to believe that the Memphis Grizzlies will be at the top of the conference. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.